Hello, how are you guys doing? Good? Yes, let's get the energy pumping, okay? All right, so uh, my slides, they're appearing a little bit blurry, uh, but basically what I want to tell you that it took me 20 years to find my passion and my purpose. 20 years. But I find my passion and my purpose by giving. I didn't find my passion and purpose by just asking what is it for me. And this is what I'm going to talk about it. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about we are right now in the most exciting times that humankind have experienced. And I'm going to show you what. First of all, I want you to look at this and see how much the internet landscape has evolved. Okay? Where it took Jeff Bezos to go to 50 investors to convince to get one investor to invest for his crazy idea. And if you look further, in 2006, YouTube, I was working for, for a media company, and we were making $4 million a year, and we were scratching our head how in this world Google is offering YouTube $1.6 million without one single dollar as a revenue. Can you figure that out? It was impossible to think that someone will pay that. We were scratching our heads. We were like, this is crazy. But you know what's crazy? It's crazy that today, YouTube makes a revenue alone $3.6 billion a year. This is what's crazy. And you know how? By you participating on those videos that you're creating without them creating these videos. They understood crowdsourcing long way before we, the crowdsourcing as a term existed. And, and the list goes on. We can talk about this all day long. I want you to look at this very closely. If we talk about open source here, what happens if WordPress fails? Does that mean one-fourth of the websites go down completely? We need to ask these questions. But we, most important, we also must understand what are we building? Are we building just a platform that anyway, in the old way, it goes back to centralization? Or are we building a system that empowers people? This is what we have to ask. Aaron mentioned about can we figure out how 3.5 billion people look like? I can't do that, but I can tell you where these people are. This is what really made me move to Asia in the first place three years ago from New York during crowdsourcing week. However, when I went on and I find out, I find out the next billion opportunity, it's not in Asia, it's not in China, it's not in India. As a matter of fact, it's a woman. Yes, big applause to a woman. Please. If we're going to do this thing, we need to empower a woman. This is the only way we're going to do it because women are the mothers who are really bring us up. This is so important. Let's not focus on the platforms. Let's not focus in, in people, in numbers. Let's focus in women. We hear all this sharing economy, collaborative economy, crowd economy, but I like to put it in a way that if we're going to redefine what really this means, let's call the crowd economy in a sense of like, let's break it down to 14 parts. And the 14 parts look something like this. Where we're still learning. We're in that period of really going deep down and understanding what does this mean and how we can really go and really nail each single part and what this means to the new economic system. And if you really go further and we talk about five Ps, I come from a marketing world, 
And I can't even believe it that I spent four years in university studying marketing, and we learned about four Ps, we, and we never learned about two most important Ps, which is people and processes. So if we're going to redesign all this thing, we, got, we must start with people, and we must bring the purpose, why they're being in it. Yes, the platform is, is later on, but you're not going to get any productivity, any social productivity into the system without folks in designing the system for people. That's how important it is. We're living in the most exciting times because there's something that's happening here. We have three types of current mindsets that exist today. Even though the World Wide Web represents a three plus billion people, we still have majority of people with a mindset of 1930s. They look for one job, security, location focus. And we can't blame them. We also have to design a system for them. Because not everyone is capable to do what I and what most of you can do. Second is people who are utilizing the power of crowdsourcing through the platforms. And I was asked the other day, someone said, is Mechanical Turks a crowdsourcing model? And I said, that falls under microtasking. People don't make a living out of microtasking. Certainly, people don't make a living contributing on a Wikipedia as well. As you all know, Wikipedia is by contribution. On top of it, you're also contributing your money as well. So you're not just contributing your time and your skills and your talents, but you're also contributing the money itself. And the third is something that is very impressive what's really what's happening today. How many of you have read or started to read the book called Bold by Peter Diamantis? Any of you? Any of you? None of you? Okay. After this, please go out there, not because I'm promoting you, but it's really it's going to give you a whole different disruptive mindset. If you're looking to really see what people don't want to do it, the robots will do it. Okay? Don't try to solve that problem with people. People are brought in this world to make much bigger change than to do a lot of things that we focus on. So the robots will do those jobs that we don't want to do it. And this is where things are really starting to become very interesting. So you don't see the real person there, but basically, there is this mindset of this internet of download, I call it. Where pretty much like what this past and present internet landscape looks like. They're pretty much in this mindset of really location focus and really doing things. But that doesn't, not, that that's nothing wrong with it. But what's really happened to the future is that now we're immersing ourselves into, into internet. So if you're part of it and you are part of this whole ecosystem, you start to realize how this can really benefit you. So we all talk about platforms, we all talk about collaboration, but I can tell you right now, I build a company for profit to make a change. I have no issue of not making money, but you gotta be ethical of making money. And I'll tell you, it is very difficult to get seven or 10 people to collaborate on a platform on a virtual office. To get them into the habit to really look at, for example, Asana here, we use Asana, to get them to go into this virtual office every single day to look at the task, it is very difficult to do. And I'm still struggling. So let's figure out like, okay, what's really out there and how we can do these things. But also, Let's also make sure that we have a right focus. 
Okay? So it's about the right focus. If we have a wrong focus, we're not solving any problems. These are many of the platforms that we use as a company. These are all part of the crowdsourcing movement. But it, are they fair? I don't know. It's Fiverr fair. I don't think so. $5 for a task? That's not fair. But does it, does it get my benefit of it? Yes. How can we improve these things? This is what we need to do. And I want to share you something. If we talk about the jobs back in the days, I want you to think about two centuries ago, in the United States alone, 90% of jobs came from agriculture. Today, there's 2%, less than 2% jobs coming from agriculture. What are we eating here? You are what you eat. <laughs> are we eating processed things that it's going to really give us a heart attack in the age of 40 or 50? This is important, guys. So focus is, let's try to really solve the real problems that exist today. Let's not really give money to these old multinationals that really give us sugar, but to give us health. Because success, it's not money, but it starts with health and relationship. And what I'd like to really share this with you, this is Jim Rogers, former editor of Worth Magazine. He said recently, he said, in the future, the farmers will drive Lamborghinis and the stockbrokers will drive taxis. Don't you agree with that? Don't we agree with that? We don't have to agree, but I think this is what the future looks like. Agriculture is one of the most exciting areas that we can take this in. And we can take this in not by focusing the platform itself as a technology, but focusing on a neighborhood. Thank you. Wow. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Um,